Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Career Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Bola Alabi. And with me today, we have a very special guest. Uh, we have Alison Seller uh, joining us on the show today. Alison is the founder of Health Academy. And our mission and vision is to continue to help business owners, you know, uh, broadcast, increase their reach so that they can continue to grow their businesses. And uh, Alison also talks a lot about lifestyle. So we are going to be uh, hearing from her today how to create that lifestyle that we all desire. So without keeping you guys waiting any further, I'm going to bring in my guest, Ali. How are you? Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. I am honored to be a guest today and have this conversation with you and really you know, lean into the audience here. So thank you. No, it's awesome. I'm, I'm always excited whenever we uh, I have people to talk with like this, uh, especially when we talk about topics that will help people you know, in their businesses, as well as their lifestyle. I think that's something that we don't often talk about enough uh, on the topic of lifestyle. And I'm mm -hmm. glad that you, as a personal coach, uh, professional coach, uh, you are in that pay space, helping people with their lifestyle. Anyway, with, without, um, you know, uh, keeping people waiting, uh, they yeah. want to so can you please introduce yourself to my audience so that yes absolutely and and thank you like I said so I am Allison Seller if you know me or see kind of my stuff floating around I go by Ali I am a business and lifestyle coach and I'm one that's really evolved and grown based on so many of my personal experiences what you just touched on there, it's like we hear a lot regarding business and how to grow, whether that's through marketing, program development courses. But what I recognized it over the years is we don't talk enough about what do we want our lifestyle to look like? What do we, how do we want to live? How do we want to serve, parent, you know, re have relationships? And we can build a business then that is successful on paper, but so misaligned to what we were truly desiring. So to be able to, again, step into the space and work with people, I feel blessed every day. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, again, just to align with what you are saying, I, I know there are many business owners out there uh, saying that they are building their businesses, working on their businesses, but they don't have that, you know, work-life balance um, in time. And for me, it's not only about work-life balance. It's about creating those healthy choices uh, that will lead to the lifestyle that we all want uh, to, to live. So what, what are some ideas um, that you want to put out uh, to help people understand that, yeah, build your business by all means, but also you need to focus on those lifestyle that you desire. What, what are some ideas? Yeah. And I think the first question is, and it's asking ourselves, what do we want to be experiencing? What does a healthy or a wealthy, and like I said, I spell wealthy, W-E-L-L, -L, right? What does that look like? We have an education system in United States and Canada and in many countries that are very focused on, you know, educating us and, and creating experts. And that's amazing. That's mm -hmm. definitely amazing. But we are never asked in that when looking in a career path or a career choice, how do you want to live? Right. Outside of money, people think, well, I want money. Well, okay, we should have financial abundance to support how we want to live. I agree with that. It shouldn't be one or the other. But at the end of it, if you are creating something and you don't know how you want to live, do you want to be, you know, home with your children, be able to attend events, coach a team? Do you want to be able to travel and, and see the world? Do you want to be able to live in remote location at a beach or, you know, at the top floor in a, a city tower that can evolve and change? But the problem is we're never really asked that. 
We're never stretched in that way or mindset of thinking to really connect. Okay, if I want to be experiencing certain things, what business career choices am I making that have some alignment to that? And to me, that's a really important first step. One that in so many cases too, we have disconnected ourselves from. We've disconnected ourselves and said, you know, that's what I can experience once I get there or once I've made X amount of dollars or, you know, retired. <laughs> I'm saying, what would it look like if we actually started working on that right now? Oh, wow. No, that, that is good, Holly. And and you, you call it, how do you want to live? I always uh, say, what do you want? You know, and you are completely right. Many people, they don't think about this, that what do I want? Uh, I think the drive to make money, you know, we live in a hustle culture. The yes. drive to make money and we make money the number one priority. By mm -hmm. all means, I encourage people to make money. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we all need to watch out for ourselves. We need to know what exactly uh, we want. And by knowing what we want, we'll be able to, you know, navigate in the right direction and go after what we want. And of course, the money will come later. But I know people yeah. that don't see it in that way. It's difficult for them to wrap their brain around it that way. So that, that's, yeah. And I love what you said there, like just referring to the hustle culture. The hustle culture is a real thing, right? It's it's yeah. spoken about, it's, you know, there's studies on it. And what we see right now as we are, I wouldn't say we are out of it, but we have more awareness of it, I think since, you know, 2020. Right. <laughs> there's more awareness on that hustle culture. And we have more access, more information, more capability than we've ever had in the history of mankind in this hustle culture. But we have greater depression, greater anxiety, more split families, marriages, et cetera, simultaneously. So there, there's something not working in that. There's something that, again, is disconnecting as to us as humans and what we actually want and what we're being told that we want. No. So I think it is, again, it's just this, this question. And like you said, it's not that you can't be financially abundant, but understand what that is, what you're experiencing when you are, when you have that and create that, create right. that. The, the money comes, it flows when you let it flow. You got to let it flow. <laughs> yeah. So Ali, you are a coach. So you are going to tell us the how, but before we go on uh, to answer that question about how they can create that lifestyle, mm -hmm. I want to talk about the why. Yeah. Why, in your opinion, I, I know you have students uh, that you work with. Mm -hmm. Why is it that many people don't think about how they can create that lifestyle that they actually want mm -hmm. rather than you know just chasing everything that comes in their way? Mm -hmm. And I think the why people don't is really because it's not talked about enough. There's not enough conversation. It's not in our education system to stretch that way of thinking. So I think the, the why not is, again, just from lack of conversation, lack of leadership in that space, really speaking to it. We see, you know, on social platforms. And I mean, we have so much access to information. We see like these shiny end results, right? We see this, this level of perfection that's not necessarily real, but we, and we are aligning that to the grind and the work and to get there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we, we are kind of seeing it. No one's talking about it and how to get there is there's a complete misalignment. Yeah. Now, I know uh, before we started this podcast, you talked about your five-step framework. Yes. Uh, I want to hear, maybe that would tell us the how, uh, I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. can, you, yes. uh, can you tell us more about that uh, five-step framework and how it's going to help people to create the lifestyle that they actually want? 
Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's it started with what I just shared, and I call it the foundation, right? And within the foundation, there are a few steps. It's understanding why, right? But not why you're not, why it's important to you. What do you want? Why you why that's important to you? And I have a, a third component in that foundation. I don't call it what, why, and how. I say what, why, and give, right? So what do you want? Why is it important? And how can you give from that space? Because, you know, we can talk about, you know, we need to be giving and sharing and our expertise, get it out there. And I don't care what industry you're in. So I always say what, why, and give. It's so important without those foundational pieces, the other steps are are quite difficult. So that would be the foundation. From there and within my area of expertise, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs who are selling their time. Okay, Mm -hmm. they're selling time. It is a time-driven industry. Our work days are you give eight hours and I will pay you for each of those hours, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so what I like to, I like to flip that a little bit. And in then this next component, what is a big problem you solve for somebody? What's the big problem you solve? If you are working in an entrepreneurial, whether you are selling a service or a product or a, you are solving a problem for somebody, what is that big problem? It can expand and grow, but I just, again, want to get people in the framework of thinking differently. What is that big problem you solve? So that would really be the next step. We try to be so much and try to be everything to everybody, but get lost. And that's again, where we're working, overworking. We're trying to dance for everybody. And it's like, hold on, (laughs) there's enough people when you can help one person. Mm -hmm. So it's getting really clear on that. Who, what is that big problem you solve? Right. Okay. Why is that important to your perfect client? Back to that why. And then we get to step back and we get to look at packaging or creating your offering, right? Your solution to that problem. And a solution is not time driven in the sense of I need to, you know, sit down with somebody three days this week from 12 to one, right? Right. And I think when we're looking at so many models, they're really driven by time. I'm saying you have a level of expertise, which could be your education on top of that, likely your experience. And if you're an entrepreneur, you have a passion in it. Like there's something about it that's driving you. That's a little different. So you have all of those pieces. So now we get to package that. How are you going to help somebody solve that big problem. So that would be the next step again, creating your offering. And then I always jump into marketing after that, because once you've done that, it's not about building the funnels and maxing out your hashtags. And again, the complicated stuff that steals all our time. It's like, show up as the result. Your clients believe you trust you, like you, or don't like you, but you need both. <laughs> so that's okay too. Yeah. <laughs> Can't have one of those other. Mm-hmm. But you, when you are showing up as the result, and it seems so simple, and it is in actuality, we get in our own way, right? Our, our own little insecure minds get in our own way. But when we show up as the result, and again, I just help people to recognize that, your perfect clients are there. That one person who is then a hundred people, who is then a million people, they're there. They're there. And then that next step in that would just be, again, fine tuning, because there's a natural growth that happens when you've done these first steps correctly. There's, of course, some depth in them. We, we work through things and, and really get that clarity. But I also want to highlight, like, it's not overcomplicated. It's just, it's not. Okay. And when I'm, I'm just going to go back to program development for a minute, because again, There's a vast majority of industries, even corporate, we structure things by the hour. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of the people I I help and I serve, not all, but a vast majority have been selling their time. 
and are successful by an industry standard, right? So they can be working eight, 10, 12 hour days right. because to grow your business, mm -hmm. you, you need, need to, to add, yeah, yeah. To add time, yeah. right? So I just want to pull people away from that. Just because it's been a standard in which you're working doesn't mean it's actually you are working at your greatest capacity in that model, that we can actually solve problems by being there for people without. And, and in fact, I will say more powerfully when we have the fluidity to be there for them, as opposed to scheduled times where likely both of you are kind of forcing the call. It's right. like, I, I'm there for my clients. I have an open schedule to be there for my clients. Mm -hmm. And when they need me on a Tuesday, I have a, I have the flexibility, bandwidth, energy to be there as cool. opposed to waiting for next week, Wednesday, when we're scheduled, right? <laughs> like if we could start to think differently, right. we can really expand how we are serving. Okay. So you, you packed so much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to touch on two. Uh, the first, okay. the, uh, you, you are trying to discourage people from selling their, uh, their time, right? You want them to uh, understand uh, how to structure their and plan their time so that they are not just um, a slave to time, right? Mm. Uh, and also, I want us to uh, explore more about those steps that you highlighted you talked about what, why, and give. Uh, what big problem are we solving? And I think you you are going to help your uh, customer, your clients. You are going to help them package themselves so that they, they will be able to go out there and attract the right customers uh, to themselves and continue to grow their business. But first, let's, let's talk about that time. How can we uh, prevent or encourage people from that prevent people from selling their time what what's what is it that they do not understand and what knowledge do you have that you want to share with them right now yeah and again it's it's looking at yesterday our belief system is based on what we have experienced so we can get trapped in those cycles just because something has worked a certain way and we could challenge how it's worked Right. But because it's generated maybe a certain amount of of income or st stability in their business doesn't mean that that's the only way it can work. And in fact, I will challenge that on the other side, it can work even greater. OK, right. so most of it, it's really recognizing that um, so many people you talk to, they're drained. Right. They're tired. They just don't have any more to give. And if we're going to look at just the, the tangible side of that, there's nobody who can tell me, and I will boldly say nobody can tell me, that on their sixth, seventh, eighth client appointment or, or appointment in a day, that they have the same capacity to give as they do for the first and second. Uh -huh. And I'm not saying that person doesn't fake it and they're amazing, but they don't. And that doesn't mean you're not great. It means that your model's not structured properly. Right, right. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So it's looking at, if we can actually step back and look at it through the lens of, okay, wonder if it could be different. What could that look like? Because again, we can only grow some, we can't create more time. We know that for sure, mm -hmm. right? That's, yeah. that's possible. We know that, we're speaking to people who constantly, who are tired, who are overworked, who are hustling to something that they're just not going to get to. Okay. So I'm saying, let's, let's step back and, and then step back in. So we want to step back. Okay. Why are you, why are you in this space? What are you passionate about? Again, how do you want to serve people and help people? Okay. And I'm saying your expertise mm -hmm. doesn't have to be packaged by time or this long list of deliverables. Right. People will invest in leadership. So lead, they will invest in results. So provide a result. Mm -hmm. The reason people will go to liposuction before going into the gym is because it's like they know it's the like, results. Yeah. yeah, the result, right? <laughs> They're right. like, give me the result and I'll work to maintain it after. That's right. So right? Uh, 
So Ali, uh, I, your story, I want to hear more about it. So how you went from burnout uh, and to a more structured life. Mm-hmm. What happened and what did you do uh, to create that structure around your life? Yeah. So again, I can speak to this passionately because I I've done it. Mm-hmm. I was in a model where I sold my time for money. And by industry standards, I was successful. I had money coming in. I had back-to-back clients. I had a wait list. Oh, wow. And and my son had, one of my sons, I have three boys, had a Christmas concert. And I got the date wrong of his Christmas concert. And I told my husband, I'm like, you need to take him to the Christmas concert. I have a client. Okay. I prioritized my commitment of this booked meeting, which was really an insignificant (laughs) session. Okay. But I prioritized it. Right. And so there's my husband sending me pictures from, you know, the concert, my son, like before he's leaving, like, you're not coming, you know, and like, oh no. (laughs) And I sat at my desk, waiting, prepared for my client. It was five minutes after they weren't there yet. 10 minutes after they weren't there yet, 20 minutes after. And I sat there and I actually just started to cry and I'm not a crier. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not really a crier. Uh, because I was like, what am I doing? uh, What am I doing? Is this like, I've been telling myself for years that I'm working so hard for my kids that I'm like, I took this appointment and didn't cancel it for them that I, you know, and it was this moment of, we, we all talk about like this rock bottom that for me was, you know, it was mine oh it was like where I realized I just had it wrong. Yeah. Um, so this was a Thursday. My husband came home and on the Friday I said, I, we have, I have to change things like this isn't working. And it was that moment that I metaphorically, nobody come after me. I didn't literally burn down my business, but I metaphorically <laughs> burnt down my business on that weekend. And I really just went back to the drawing board. I thought, okay, what is it I'm trying to do? Well, I'm very passionate about helping people. I'm very passionate about helping them solve a problem. Okay. Why do I need to sit? Like, how can I structure this differently Mm -hmm. to serve them while honoring of why I want to do it in the first place? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I was becoming very unhealthy in a perceived health industry. Uh, so, uh-huh. and so it was, it was in a weekend that I, cr- like, I literally like got to create like what, how I'm going to do this differently. And this is the part that's like funny, not funny is on that Monday morning when I relaunched, just being real, sharing the problem I solve. I, I booked two calls. I had priced my program, not by the hour, but by a result. Right. Right. By, by 10 AM that morning, I had these two calls booked right away. I got on and had made more on that Monday morning than I typically made in a month. And I did well in my month. And that was not my intention. My intention was to get back to my why. So you reprioritize your life. Uh, Mm -hmm putting attention to what really matters to you. And that's the message that you are giving to people uh, to uh, arrange their lives, uh, their work around their lifestyle. So that's very good. Now, Holly, let's say someone out there, they want to uh, come uh, and work with you in terms Mm. of for you to help them, uh, you know, achieve the same result that you did. what does that process look like? Yeah, and and thank you for asking that. First and foremost, I love building connections. I love having conversations with people. So the more we can start having real conversations, I think that's that's key. Um, my website is healthacademyinc.com. But what I would love to share from there is, is first and foremost, if you're just, you know, curious, you you agree with the conversation, download my five steps to building a, a wealthy business and lifestyle. It allows you to really 
dive into those steps that I've shared here. It was a lot of information like you, like you mentioned, but to take a look at that. And from there, again, it's just about building relationship. I do have two programs available. One is called Becoming Wealthy. And that's really my entry program. And then I've got a really um, elite VIP deep dive program, which is the Wealthy Entrepreneur, where it's very one-on-one -on -one with me. So again, there's multiple opportunities to connect. Most importantly, let's start having the conversations. So can they find out uh, five the downloadable uh, material on your website? Yes, they can. Yep. Top line, you will see that download right there and all the ways to contact me. Okay, I will leave that um, uh, in my show notes so that they can reach out to you. Thank you, uh, I appreciate it. One, one other thing, uh, Holly, uh, as we are uh, wrapping up uh, this episode, um, are there other things that you would like people to know in terms of how to, uh, you know, you, you, you said that leadership starts with you. Mm -hmm. How can people start taking that leadership position in their life, in their businesses, in everything that they do so that they can live uh, their life in their own terms. Yeah. And I think it, it comes to asking ourselves the real questions. It, we need to take a pause and ask ourselves the real questions. And from there, listen. We hear about, you know, great leaders are really good listeners and that we we reference that in listening to others, but we need to start by listening to ourselves. We all have that rooted feeling, that knowing, and we often push that down. So I want to encourage you to ask the questions and listen to your own answers. Listen to what you're telling yourself. That's awesome. So thank you very much for joining us here today. And this thank is- Thank you. Indeed. I appreciate this conversation and I've enjoyed everything that you've shared with us. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate being on and thank you very much. All right.